But I, I, I personally, I really like uh, Matt. I think that um, he is knowledgeable in several things. Um, I think that he has... Matt's here. I think he's listening now. Oh, okay. Matt, Matt might want to join the stage. Maybe he can join in chat a bit. Hello, how are you guys doing? Hey, Matt, hey, how are what's you? up, Matt? Doing all right. Just got out the radio show and relaxing a little bit and prepping for a debate. I got to be on Friday. I thought I'd just listen in and see what guys are that are doing. Are you ready You're be for on the, the burner, Matt? You want to not relax too much? <laughs> are you ready for the debate on Friday, Matt? Not yet. Getting there. Who are you debating? Some Muslim guy. I forgot his name. Brent something. Brent Pratt. I don't know. It's um, it's Jake, the Muslim Jake. metaphysician who is up top, and I don't, I don't know if you remembered Matt from our previous conversation, but he's he's one of the top two critics of the Trinity on online. Period. Uh, him and Dale Tuggy are the top two that I can point to if a Christian's looking at who's critiquing the Trinity at a high level. I would just, I just recommend. I know you said you haven't prepped or gotten ready much yet, but I would recommend looking at some of his material and reading up on that before the debate on Friday. Yeah, well, where is his material? He has a channel, Muslim Metaphysician on YouTube, like 15,000 subscribers. Okay. He's got a yeah, couple of debates out. out there. Yeah, he debated James White as well. Uh, that you, you can also see that today. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> It'll be interesting. Why is it that only the Trinity can account for it? Well, that's a good question. Uh, and when I try and answer the question, I, I will admit, first of all, that I'm having difficulty articulating the problem of the one and the many of, of uh, universals and particulars and the relationship to actuality. Something I've been struggling with for a year or two. And so I think the Trinity, without it put, connecting all the dots, I think the Trinity is a necessary precondition by which the one and the many are equally ultimate and uh, justifies what is truth. Mm. Yeah, but Matt, what, what would be the problem with one God who's a particular that has multiple aspects but not three persons and he grounds universals what's the problem well then uh that would simply be that the aspects are part of his unity that's all yeah but he's a particular so there's universe uni uh unity and diversity right so what would the difference be not in his nature yeah there would be the, the uh no no the particulars would be um, a manifestation of his unity. I don't know what you mean by that. I mean, clearly, there would be, he's a particular, okay? So he's an individual, and he grounds universals, right? So you have the one and the many. That's how does uh, a Unitarian being ground the one and the many? Well, that's what I'm asking you. How doesn't he? No, you say he does. I want to know how you say he does. I already gave you my answer. I just explained how he can be one and diverse. That's you mean the, the properties the of his oneness? Yeah. What's the difference? Yeah, but properties of oneness is not the same thing as um, as uh, being one in many. What do you mean? Can you explain properties. that? Properties emanate out of the essence. All right. You know that. And so you have properties that emanate out of the essence. What is the essence? Is the essence one or is it many? In your view of Islam, Tawid, then he is one. Okay, so then you have properties that emanate out of your God, which you can't even know exhaustively. So therefore, you can't defend exhaustively your idea of your God uh, being that, that ultimate one. He has properties, but the properties emanate out of his oneness. But his properties are not identical to his oneness. It lets you want to go with that. Yeah, but you're you're moving to something else about uh, defending the knowability, or this, that's another issue. But I'm saying, what what's the difference? Because in that model, you have one and many, don't you?
Tell me how the Muslim God is both one and many in his essence. Well, so you're saying there has to be many essences? Is that what you're saying? I don't understand, because in the Trinity, there's only one essence, right? I'm asking you a question. If you're going to just ask questions without answering anything, you know, I'm not going to talk to you. Well, I asked you a question initially. Yeah, you did, and I answered it initially. Then I responded with a question, and you didn't answer it. Yeah, I've already explained how God is one in many. How is your God one in many? He's one God with multiple aspects. And what are the aspects? Attributes. So it's attributes. Okay. That's your position. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are the attributes identical with his essence? No. Okay. Then you don't have a true one in many. Why not? Because his attributes are not identical with his essence. But you said that the attributes emanate out of his essence. But if his essence is one, the attributes aren't a reflection of his oneness, but of his, or of multiplicity, or as many, but of his oneness, because they're just attributes that emanate out of the one. Well, I didn't say anything about emanating. That was your terminology. Yeah. And how do attributes exist? But they are related to the essence, the ontos, right? Yeah, but how are they not many? That's what I'm trying to understand. You have many attributes, sure. Just as God has many aspects to his thinking. He can have many thoughts. He can think several things. But that doesn't mean his thoughts are identical to his essence. Mm -hmm. And one in the many, we're talking about the ultimate essence of God. And you're playing a word game here. No, I'm just trying to understand what, what actually are you trying to drive that with the one and the many, right? Because obviously there's one and many we'll in what I just in what I just described, right? So there must be something more specific. We'll, we'll so get if to it's that something time. about yeah, if it's something about the the attributes or in your case the persons being identical to the essence, um, well then yeah, I don't believe the attributes are identical to the essence. So if it somehow solves the problem uniquely by each one of the persons being identical to the essence, then I think you should just be clear on that if that's what you're saying. With the is of identity, right? Well, yeah, I don't know if that's your view. Do you believe the persons are identical to the essence? Discuss that later, won't we? Yeah. Is what sense do you mean uh, are, which is a uh, just a, a verb form of the word is. So what sense do you mean that? Yeah, that they're identical. They're identical? So you're just citing the law of identity, A equals A? Yeah, that each person is identical to the essence. That's what I thought you were saying earlier. That's why I so you was asking. Talk about predication? No. And what kind of predication? I'm saying, if, is, this, is the father identical to the essence? No, see, that's the problem to say that. To say the father's identical is, what do you mean by is? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know any other way to say it other than the father and whatever the father is, the essence is, and vice versa. You're supposed to know about the is of identity and the is of yeah. predication, right? Yeah. And the discernibility of identicals and maybe Leibniz's is not law. I don't know. But uh, what we're talking about here is is uh, what the word is, is. Yeah. In this case, I'm asking, is it being used in terms of identity? Well, we're just talking about equality. Is the father equal to, to a God? Well, God, by definition, is triune in the divine simplicity. To say that the Father then is that is a fallacy of equivocation. So the issue of the identity is of identity isn't going to work. You should abandon that. Okay, so you abandon that because it sounded like you were saying the persons are identical to the essence. So then I there, is really a sense, you... there is a sense in which they are and there's a sense in which they're not. But we'll discuss it on Friday. Yeah. I don't know what that means, so we'll see. You know what it means? It means a Friday during our debate, 
we'll be going through it. That's what it means. No, I'm saying you saying there's a sense in which they're identical and there's a sense in which they're not. That doesn't make sense. Yes, it does, because different senses deal with the word is, is of identity, is of predication. Right. So they're either identical or not, or they're not. They're not identical in one sense and not in another. They are in different senses. What do you mean when you say the word is? If this is how the debate's going to go, we're not going to get anywhere. It's not going to accomplish any. I can ask you the questions, too. I, I can ask you, what kind of predication theory are you going to hold to? And whose view do you hold and why? And what justifies it? I don't know how far, far down deep you want to get in, but we're not going to accomplish anything. I think we are. I think, I think the debate is going to go just as I plan. Yeah. And how do you plan? Um, so I'm going to present clear arguments against the Trinity. Um, you're not going to have an answer. And you're not going to be able to formulate an argument for the Trinity to show how any other view besides it is contradictory or problematic, and you're going to lose the debate. It's not what the debate's about. Yeah. Maybe it's, you might want to think about what it is you're debating. It is. It's the debate title is, is the Trinity necessary for reality? It's not, is the Trinity true? That's what you're arguing. That's not the debate. No. The, the debate presupposes the validity of the Trinity as a position. Is the, it's like the Christian Trinity, necessary for, that's what the debate is. Yeah, and you're going to argue yes, and I'm going to argue no. Very simple. <clears throat> and what you're going to do is you're going to be arguing a different topic. Is the Trinity true? No, I'm not. I'm going to say, is the Trinity necessary? You're going to have to show how it's necessary, and I'm going to show how it's not necessary. You just said you were going to argue against the Trinity. That's yeah, what you're going to do. to try and show I'm it's gonna, false. Yeah, and by showing it's false, shows that it's not necessary. But the debate is not about whether it's true or false. <laughs> yeah, it's about whether or not it's necessary. And if it's false, then it's necessarily not necessary. So the debate title is the Trinity necessary for reality. The Trinity is the teaching one God and three distinct simultaneous co-eternal persons. That's the debate. It's given that that's what it is. Is that condition necessary for reality? It's not, is the Trinity one God and three distinct simultaneous co-eternal persons true? Matt, do you know what necessary means? I'm not sure if I necessarily understand that. What do you mean? Yeah, I, I think that's part of the problem. Can something that's false be necessary in the context necessary for of what? the title? I would say can, in that can case, something no, false? What? Can something false explain reality necessarily? You mean like Islam? No. No, I'm saying like any view. Can something that's false take any false view? Can something that's false be necessary to explain reality? I would say no. So let me get this straight. So what you're going to do is spend time arguing against the Trinity. Well, the debate, gonna the do? debate is whether or not the Trinity is necessary to explain reality. <clears throat> so you're going to spend your time attacking the doctrine of the Trinity. Well, what else would I attack? Would I, I wouldn't attack Matt Slick. I mean, what else would I well, attack? You're going to attack the doctrine of the Trinity. That's what you're going to do. Matt, just want to make sure. What, Matt, what do you think? Okay, ba before this conversation, what did you think I would be arguing? Because I'm not really I don't sure. Know. What you're... I don't know what you're <laughs> going to be arguing. Yeah, I mean, what else? I mean, the debate is whether or not the Trinity is necessary. I think it's very yeah, clear. And, and the Trinity is one God and three distinct simultaneous persons. Is that position necessary? In other words, is the one in the many nature of the triune God the necessary precondition for all actuality? That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's where it is. Yeah, that's the debate. You're going to say yes, and I'm going to say no, correct? <clears throat> and I'm going to do what the debate title is. Assume what the Trinity is and argue from it. You're going to assume that it's not true, but that's not the debate. No, I'm not going to assume that it's not true. I'm going to show that it's not true. No, you're going to assume it, and you think you're going to show it, and you're going to waste our time because that's not what the debate is. 
Okay, Matt. So you tell me where I'm going wrong with how I'm understanding it. How am I understanding necessary? If something that's false, right? It can't be necessary to explain everything that exists. Then if you cannot demonstrate the Trinity is false, then you're, you have failed. Right? No, it's actually the opposite. If you can't demonstrate that the Trinity is necessary, then you failed. I just have to show that it's not so necessary. So then all you're going to do is attack the Trinity, which I will refute. And then you're going to say you claim victory anyway. No, I mean, it's two things. I'm going to show, first of all, that the Trinity is not necessary because it's false. And also, I'm going to anticipate that you're not going to be able to show that the Trinity is necessary, even if I can't show that it's false. So then, <clears throat> either way, I lose, according to you. Yeah, you have no chance in hell. No chance in hell. All right. <clears throat> so then all the argumentation and logic that you're going to use presupposes your God. No. It doesn't. So then you argue from a position that excludes your God? I'm arguing to show that the Trinity is not necessary. I got you. If it's not necessary, then something else is, correct? Could be or could not be. That's irrelevant. What? What? That's, that's irrelevant. You mean the Trinity is not true, then there's no way to provide any necessary conditions for intelligibility. No, I believe that there is, wow. but I don't need to argue for that in the debate because the debate is not whether or not my position is correct. The debate is whether or not the Trinity is necessary. And so you're going to argue against the tr Trinity being coherent. <clears throat> so once you fail at that, and I show you that your position doesn't work and your arguments against the Trinity don't, don't have any validity, and then I demonstrate, or at least try to, demonstrate how the Christian Trinity is a necessary preconditions for intelligibility, well, then there we go. You're just going to say no and haven't done it. I'm going to say, yes, I have. That's what's going to yeah, happen. You're able, Matt, if you're able to do those two things, then you would win the debate, correct? And would you repent of your false doctrine of Islam and become a Christian? Um, yeah, but that's, I don't think there's any chance of that happening. Well, God has to grant you that repentance. And if you have chosen to follow Muhammad, the false prophet, and the false Quran, which I can prove is false, well, then that's up to you. And say a prayer we'll have for an interesting me before discussion. the debate, Matt. Oh, I will. I'll, I'll pray for your salvation. It's not a mocking, condescending thing. You have been entrapped by a false doctrine from a demonic force through Muhammad. Your God is a deceiver. Yeah. Surah 4, 157. Yeah. Yeah, Matt, your and your <clears throat> God sends a lying spirit to make people believe what is false. And you know what the difference is between efficient and proximate causation, right? Right? I'm looking forward to the debate, Matt. I think it's gonna be fun. What do you Are think? you do you know what the difference is between the proximate and efficient causation is? Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into any of that now. I just wonder if you know. Do you know what the difference is? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. Then you will know that your God is the efficient cause of his deception, and in Christianity, God is the proximate cause. No, and therefore that's incorrect. Not culpable. That's incorrect. That is correct. That is correct. That's incorrect. Your God specifically deceives people. Surah 4, 157. <laughs> Matt, Matt, I don't take your exegesis of the Quran seriously at all. In Surah 4, 157, Allah according to Tasfir, is the one who made by his own hand someone look like um, <clears throat> Jesus to be crucified. That means your God, by his direct hand and direct action, is the cause of the deception. No, that's incorrect. No, that is correct. But Matt, you, but Matt, you, could, you could, what you could do is you could bring that up in the debate, and then that will just make you look bad because that's irrelevant to the debate. You said I was going to bring it up in the debate. Exactly. So there's no point in talking about it. 
I'm talking about you here now. You have a false God. I'm informing you of your false God and your false prophet. And that the proof of it is found in Surah 482. If there's any discrepancy in the Quran, it's not from Allah. And yet in Surah 86, 5 through 7, it says a man's seed comes from his chest. And it says Allah is a deceiver, <laughs> for Surah 4, 157. You can laugh. Yeah, yeah you can that's, laugh. that's not what it says, Matt. All that of is arguments, what it says. Matt, I all know. Of your arguments, all of your arguments are based on your inability to actually exegete passage of the Quran. I don't take your exegesis of my text seriously at all, just as you probably wouldn't take my exegesis of the Bible seriously. So, I mean, you could waste your time using these type of arguments, mm -hmm. but I'm not concerned with it at all. Well, then let's see what the people in the room say. Sir of 86, 5 through 7, let man but think from what he is created. He's created from a drop emitted proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. Yeah, Matt, what's the, the word ejaculation. there? What's the word there in Arabic? I don't know. Have you actually looked up tafsirs for it? Would you explain it? Yeah, I have. Okay, can you give me one? No, I don't have the top of my head memorized. Okay, so I'll stop wasting my time then. You're wasting mine. You ask for a question. Once you correct it, show us how a drop emitted proceeding from the chest yeah, is how gonna, we have Matt, our origination. I'm not going to teach you. I'm not going to give you a Tafsir exegesis lesson here in this teach room. Me. I'm not going to do it. No, I'm not going to do it. Why not? Gonna do it. Why not? I'm not going to do it. So everybody knows you don't want to do it. You're not either yes, able to. I've, you I've don't know the issue. That, I've made that very yeah. clear. I could explain it to you, but I don't want to. Well, explain it. Okay, then I'll explain it to the listeners. It <laughs> Matt, actually you is, seem very um, upset. Are you all right? Comes from, no, I'm fine. That a man's seed comes from his chest, and we don't believe in chesticles. All right, so the Quran yeah, that's not the word. got it wrong. That's not the word. It's not chest. <laughs> I mean, Between on, the backbone and the ribs. Is, is this a joke, Matt? Honestly. Hey, I know people who speak Arabic. I know people who are raised over there who are Christians, and they can tell you all you want to know about the Arabic. And what yeah, it really why says. don't you bring them? I can call them on the phone. We can get them in. Yeah. Well, maybe we can. I'll arrange something. We can have a nice discussion. Yeah, you want to do that could, sometime. We could have another conversation about that. Sure. But in the meantime, Quran is false. You have a false God and you're under demonic influence. And I pray, I'll pray for you. I'll pray. It's not a mockery. It's not a condescension. condescension. You have been deceived by this guy named Muhammad. Matt, is there any chance you and could I'm be hoping. deceived? Could you be under demonic possession? Is there a chance of that? Only if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead. Maybe you are possessed by a demon. I think that's very possible, Matt. Well, wow. well, that's I said only if Jesus did not rise from the dead. Can you demonstrate that he did not rise from the dead? Matt, that's the condition if, I said. If he rose from the dead, could he still be possessed by a demon? No. Why not? Because Jesus Christ lives in me. That's why demonic forces don't do that. When you're in inhab when you're inhabited by God, Matthew twelve forty three through forty seven. Yeah, but that's just like the, the Mormons who uh, believe in the burning of the bosom, right? But they're not, they're not actually, no. uh, they don't actually have the Holy Spirit, do they? The Mormons who teach God came from another planet and has sex with his goddess wife and makes spirit babies. No, it's not. For you to just to uh, mix them is like mixing apples and oranges. Well, Matt, I, I actually think you are possessed. Well... I think, I don't know if you are possessed or not. It's not a tit for tat thing. But I do know that Muhammad was a killer who sinned, who had people killed, and that Islam was spread by the sword for the first 200 years and over 140 battles. I also know that when Islam gains power in any country, it becomes more violent. And those who don't agree with it are persecuted heavily. The documentation is there. I also know that in Surah chapter 9, which is the second to last Surah, Surah 110 being the last, there's nothing abrogated in it, and it talks about killing the unbelievers and going after them. This is who you yeah. follow. No, you follow these, the same all one. These, all of these, all of these uh -huh. weak claims have been refuted time and time no, again. They these, no, yeah, they, they haven't. Yeah, they have. No, they haven't. These are just, just low-level apologetics.
And if that's what you're going to bring to the debate, it's not going to end too well for you. And Muhammad said that Adam was 90 feet tall and that drinking camel urine was a form of medicine <laughs> and that a man fell asleep and the true. devil peed in his ear. That's not true. Yes, man. it is. No, it's not. Is it a Sahih? Or what level would you, you admit to Sahi? Excuse me? You don't know what Sahi is? In the Hadith? I, I do. You're just not pronouncing it correctly. But yeah, I know what it means. Do you know what it means, Matt? Yeah, it's the primary upper level of that which is orthodox and accepted as being uh, the most valid. There's four levels. Um, not not really. Yes, really. No. Yes. You know what mutawatir is? No. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. So, Matt, this is the problem. You've done a little bit of Google searching. You probably no, spoke to Sam Shamoon. You looked up his website. He maybe gave you a couple pointers, and you think that you can speak about Islam when you haven't even properly researched your own faith because you don't even have a basic understanding of the doctrine of the Trinity. Well, there you go. I guess you know it better than I do, don't you? I do. You're going to find out. Okay. So you're going to tell us and tell me how much you know about the Trinity. I will remember this for our debate, that you say you know the doctrine of the Trinity better than I do. Yes. Uh, Great. Exponentially. Okay. So. You do. So you know it better than I do. Okay, great. And so we're going to ask you to, to define what – well, I'll ask you, might as well, to define what it is. Now, you can argue against the Trinity, but it's up to you to prove that it's false, which you can't do. It'll be interesting to, do, uh, to have this discussion. Matt, you're not going to be able to even prove it's necessary, right? So I don't even have to bring an argument because you're not going to be able to prove it's necessary. You, by your own admission, have struggled to actually formulate an argument based on the one and the many. But you know what you could do because there's still a few days left. You could actually come up with a formulation of the argument that I can interact with, but I don't even think you'll be able to do it. You won't even be able to formulate an argument. Really? Okay, yeah. Well. We'll just see what happens in the debate. We'll just see. All right. If your job is to attack the Trinity. You have to demonstrate it's not true. Okay. And I don't have to prove that it's true. I just have to say that it is what is necessary. Because if God exists, no problem. We'll, we'll get to it. Yeah, I think you're going to struggle, Matt. I think you're going to struggle. Looking forward to it, sir. Okay. I'll pray for you, though, Matt. To what? What are you going to pray to? To the one and only true God, not the Trinity. And who's the only one and true God? You know it. You're convicted of it right no. now. No, I'm not. Is the true God in the Old Testament of the Bible? Who is the true God in the Old Testament? I asked, is the true God in? I didn't ask who. I said, is he in the Old Testament? Well, who is he? There are many gods in the Old I Testament. I asked you, is the, tr is the true God revealed in the Old Testament? Is he? You tell me, Matt. Yes, he is. Now, you, do you agree? Do you, Just a quick question. Is, Jake. It'll take a, Motawada means settled, right, Jake? No. So what's the name of, of your God? Matt, I'm not going to play games with you. I think you know that. What's the name of your God? Does he have a name? Matt, what you could because do is... Because the God of the Bible has a name and it's used over 9,000 yeah. times. Why what is it you, the Quran doesn't have the name of God? It does, actually. Matt, what no, it you doesn't. Do Where is, is it? What surah? Matt, what surah? Matt, what you could do is you can go to an Arabic Bible right now and open up to Genesis 1 and you tell me what the word is for God. Allah. So what's wait, the wait, name wait, what, of what, your God what that you it? call Allah? Wait, what's, what's, what, what is, is the name? To? What is it translated what's, to in an Arabic Bible in Genesis 1? I think 1? it's the word Allah, isn't it? Okay, so is that a false translation? I don't know. Is that the right word? Know. No, listen. You don't know. Is it, I thought you listen, knew. listen to me complete my sentences. Am, am I correct that that's the Arabic word for God, Allah? You should know. 
I'm just asking you for the room's I, benefit. I, I, is it the thought, correct thing to assume? Matt, I thought you were an expert on Islam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it correct or is it not correct? I just told you, go and check your Genesis 1 1 Arabic. Is the Arabic word for God Allah? You know the answer, Matt. Yes, that's correct. The answer is yes. How come you can't even answer it? I did several times. Okay. So what's the name of this God? You just said it. The name of God is I am. Where is the Quran? It says it's the true God revelation. Why is it that of all of the texts of the Old Testament, that Abraham, whom you claim to follow and believe in, and Adam and Pharaoh and all this stuff and all that went on, how come in all of the Quran, God's name is omitted? Why is it that? It is mentioned. It is mentioned, actually. Where? I want you to do some research, Matt. You, you might find out. I think it's better for you to find out on your own. You don't know? No, I do know. I'm just not Where is I'm it? just not wasting much time discussing anything else you, with you. you because you are I'm wasting looking, time. I'm I'm looking forward to the debate. Isn't it clear okay. that I don't want to discuss anything else with you, Matt? Every time I ask you a question, you sit here and you you say, I don't want to do this. I don't want you waste more time talking about how you don't want to do it than just give me a simple answer. Where's the name of, of yeah, your God in the you. Quran? I told you I'm What's not the surah? I'm not wasting my time. I'm not wasting my time discussing with you. I've told you that very politely several times, but you keep asking. So you don't have an answer. No, that okay. doesn't follow, Matt. But if you use that kind yes, of inference in the debate, you're going to have problems. So you don't have an answer. You could prove me false right now. Where is it? Matt, I'm, I'm going to prove you false on Friday. You're going to give me the name of your God in the Quran? You can ask me that. For you everybody in the room. You can ask me that. You can ask me that question during the debate if you want. So why don't, for everybody in the room, why don't you tell us where in the why Quran don't you ask me? Why don't you ask me during the debate and then I'll show you. Yeah, we'll see how well you do. All right. Looking forward to it, Matt. You seem very upset. I don't know why. It seems like I touched a nerve. I don't know what happened. No, I'm playing act. No. I just think that it's pretty typical of people who don't have answers to want to sound like they really do. That's what no, I see. Just ask me any question you I, want in the debate. Simple. It doesn't mean you're going to answer it. You said I could ask. It doesn't mean you're going to answer it. Yeah, but if I don't, I don't think if you I don't, the but if I don't answer it, then I would look bad, right, Matt? Like you are not answering it right now, and you look bad. That's your opinion. Let's see what happens. You said if you don't answer it, you look bad. You're not answering it now. We're not, you we're, look we're bad. not debating. We're just talking. What do you call this? I'm not debating you. If I were debating you, it would be totally <laughs> different. <laughs> All right. Well, it was nice talking to you. All right. You too, Matt. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it goes. I think you made a big mistake here, Matt, but it's all right. I'm smiling. I'll see you. Yeah. You, you, you totally underestimated this situation. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You guys. Are... <laughs> that was. Oof. Oh, the weighing, right? Are like you both like smack? That talking? was incredible. That was like, look, uh, yeah, that was incredible. You know what, Mean Gene? I doubt yeah, their yeah, actual yeah. debate is going. Yeah. I doubt their actual debate is going to be more entertaining than that exchange. The debate's going to be it's horrible. Very entertaining. That was <laughs> they, did you, re you guys remember the part where they both started accusing each other of being possessed by demons? <laughs> <laughs> so, hilarious. Matt that ran out of breath. <laughs> Matt got so worked up he ran out of breath. He was so mad. Is that gonna be on Tom Rabbit? <laughs>